Magnetic forces are yet another force to be considered in addition to the gravitational force and the electrostatic force. They were first considered by Gilbert, who was the one to write extensively on the subject of lodestones, stones which exhibited magnetic properties which manifested themselves as the ability to point consistently towards the Earth's magnetic north pole when suspended from a string. In modern language, we characterize all magnets as having a north pole and a south pole, and we define the north pole of a magnet as that which would, which would point towards the, the geographic north pole of the Earth if it was suspended on a string. Magnets are often symbolized with a north and a, a, north and a south written on either end of a bar, and as we will come to discuss, field lines which describe the shape of the force to be exerted on other magnets placed nearby. Here might be a compass pointing, sitting on the table. Notice that it's pointing north, the red arrow pointing to what we think of as geographically north or up in this picture. It always points north no matter where I move it here on the table. If I move it to the right, it still continues to point up to the north. If I point to the left, if I move it over to the left, it points north. No matter where it sits, it points north. If I rotate the compass, it always tries to point in the same direction. This is our notion of what north is defined by because compass needles move up that way. But if I bring a magnet nearby, and I'm going to turn on the magnetic field strength in this little simulation, notice what happens to the compass needle. It now deflects in its position. If I move the magnet, the compass tracks the magnet. If I move the magnet up here, the compass tracks the magnet. It always appears that the portion of the compass which was pointing north tries to point away from what's called this north pole of this bar magnet. If I bring the magnet up here and flip it around, now notice that the compass needle tries to point toward the south pole of this magnet. So we define the south pole of a bar magnet as the thing to which a compass needle tries to point. So when the compass needle, when it's left alone on the table all by itself, points up toward the north, geographic north of Earth, it must be trying to find a magnetic south pole. The units for magnetism are the Tesla in the MKS system. This is named after physicist Nikola Tesla. In the MKS system, one Tesla is equivalent to one Newton per one amp per one meter. We'll see the origin of this combined unit when we look at forces from magnets in a short while. Just as for electrostatics, there is a constant called the permittivity of free space is of great importance when we study magnetism. It will come up as a constant of proportionality between magnetic fields and the forces that come from them. The value for the permittivity of free space is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meters per amp. We will see this, this constant come up repeatedly in our calculations. For your reference, some typical numbers for magnetic fields are that the Earth's magnetic field near, its Earth's, near the surface is approximately one part in 10,000 of a Tesla, or 10 to the minus 4 Tesla. A very strong electromagnet is on the order of 1 or 2 Tesla. The magnetic fields at the interior of a neutron star, however, can be up as large as nearly a tenth of a billion of a Tesla.